Hello everyone, Sam here, and welcome to a new series that I'm calling as your snippets. This is going to be a series of short videos that are going to tackle a specific problem, issue, or new feature um, at a reasonably high level, but with enough detail to get you started and get you interested in the topic without all the waffle that you see from a lot of these 45 minute long videos. Um, in today's session, we're going to have a look at the new Azure PowerShell commands, so the AZ module. If you're not aware, Microsoft have recently released a new version of the Azure PowerShell command list, which are designed to work both on the current 5.1 version of PowerShell and PowerShell Core, so they can be run cross-platform. At the same time, they've decided to do a bit of rebadging and rebranding at this time, um, and change the name of the PowerShell module and the commands that run in it. So the module you're used to um, using currently, the Azure RM module, you, you're going to be using commands like get Azure RM VM and so on. In this new module, they're doing away with that name and replacing it with AZ. So the commands are going to be get AZ VM. A bit shorter um, and it does away with the sort of confusing around RM versus classic, which is, you know, I think we can all finally agree classic is, is dead. Um, so these new modules are, have been released and are available now and have gone GA now. They're in version 1 and are the recommended modules to be using um, if you're going to be doing PowerShell with uh, Azure. So, given that most people are probably still on the Azure RM modules, what we're going to cover in the rest of this video is how to actually upgrade to the new AZ modules and start using them today. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the current Azure RM modules will continue to work. They are not going to get any new features, so my understanding is that when new Azure products come out that need new Azure PowerShell modules for them, they are going to be only in the AZ modules and not in the Azure RM modules, but the current version will still continue to work and they are going to be doing bug fixes until the end of 2020. Um, but in reality, I suspect most people in the next two years are going to encounter a new feature they want to use that is only in the AZ modules and that's going to trigger an upgrade if nothing else. So it might be advisable to get upgraded to the AZ modules as soon as possible um, so you can get used to them. There is a migration path to take your scripts you've already written with the Azure RM module and keep them running um, using this aliasing command and we'll have a look at that in, in a little bit. So if we get started with upgrading our modules. Okay, so we're on a machine here that's got the RM modules still installed. So if we have a quick look, you can see that this is the list of the standard RM modules that are installed. Um, now the recommendation is that we remove the RM modules. The RM modules and the AZ modules can actually run side by side, um, but I would recommend against it because you are then going to be looking at two separate module libraries um, and you're gonna have to update them separately and you're gonna end up with confusion, particularly when you've got features that are in the AZ modules which are not in the RM modules and so on. As I mentioned, there is something we can do with aliasing to, to allow the old commands and your old scripts to work. Um, so my recommendation is to remove the Azure RM modules and just go down the AZ route with aliasing if you need it. Now, the problem with Azure PowerShell is that it can be a bit of pain to remove. Um, if you installed it using the MSI installer, then that's fairly straightforward. You can go to Add Remove Programs or you can uninstall it and, and that's fine. If you use the gallery to install it, then potentially running the uninstall module command won't remove all of these modules. It will just remove the top level as your RM module, which isn't very helpful. Um, so acknowledging this, Microsoft have provided a script that we can use to actually install this, or uninstall this, sorry. Um, so I'll put this link in the show notes. Um, but if you scroll down, there is a script which we can copy and we can paste it into PowerShell. Okay, so now we have that function in there, we're going to need to run it. If we go back to the instructions, there is actually a sample version here, so I'll copy that. Now, the version number here is wrong, so the version number is going to be the version number of your actual core top level Azure RM module. So if we scroll back up to where we listed our modules, you can see I've got the Azure RM module here, and that's going to be 6.13.1. So let's copy that. Go back down here. Replace that and run. And that's going to look at the top level module and look at the dependencies and uninstall all of those. Now, this is going to take a little while because it's got to loop through each of the modules. So the uninstall is finished now. We can double check. 
see if anything's left. It's all gone. Great, and now we're ready to install the AZ modules. So we're just going to run install module command and simply AZ. Okay, so now that's finished. Do the same thing and check the install modules. See, now we've got our AZ collection rather than the ARM one. So let's go ahead and use them. So the, the commands you're going to run are nearly always the same command you ran with, with uh, the RM templates, but you're just shortening the name to AZ. So for example, we're going to use login AZ account, and that'll log us into the command list. Now you'll notice a difference here. The login for the AZ account is using the device login, the similar way to you see with the CLI. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are plans to add the pop-up login to do it the, the old-fashioned way. Um, but for now, you need to use the device login. So we'll go ahead and copy that over here. We're all logged in. And so once we're in here now, we can do the same old commands we ran before, but changing the name to AZ. We can list subscriptions, virtual machines. Yeah, the standard command. So there's nothing much different there, apart from the fact that the name has changed. Now, the fact that the name changes obviously is a bit of a problem for existing scripts that you've, you've got. Yes, you can go through and, ch and change them if you want to, but that's time consuming. And if you've got you know old, complicated scripts, it could be a bit of pain to do. So the AZ commandlets do also come with some aliases to allow you to use the old commands against the new library. These are all disabled by default for some reason, um, but we can enable them. And you can enable them either for the whole of the modules or you can do it for specific modules. So if we have a look at doing it for a specific module first, we can do the enable Azure RM alias, and we can do it for a particular module, and we'll do az.compute. That's enabled the alias. So now I can go ahead and do a get Azure, R, Azure RM VM, and that'll work in the same way as the um, AZ commanders. I can also just do enable without any parameters and that will turn on the alias this is for all of the modules. Similarly I can disable the aliases in the same way that's no longer going to work. So that's really all there is to setting up the new AZ commandlets. As I said, I'd recommend you move to them when you can because they are going to be the ones supported going forward. You're not going to get any updates or new features on the existing ones other than bug fixes. Um, so as soon as there's a new feature that comes out you want to use, you're going to have to move, move to them anyway. Um, hopefully if you enable aliases, it's less of a pain. Um, if, with your old scripts, you should be, still be able to run them. Um, yeah, eventually I think everyone's going to have to migrate anyway, so ideally you can get started as early as possible. Hopefully that was a useful video and I look forward to seeing you again on the next Azure Snippets.